Hey, 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 I hope you're having a phenomenal day today. Today's topic is about belly dancing with confidence. And the reason I wanted to address this topic today is because I just see a lot of self-doubt, a lot of crap talk to ourself. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't be doing this necessarily because we are human and we're going to be doing it whether or not we want to be doing it but it's how we handle that information and how we turn it around and make it serve us, right? So if you, let's say, I'm gonna take, for example, if you were to watch a competition, a belly dance competition, and you saw a dancer come up on the stage and dance in a particular way that made you feel like they were unsure of what they were doing on the stage, and then you see another one who's very confident and very sure and really, really puts themselves out there. You're left with a different impact by watching that dancer. Another example is if you see a teacher who is wishy-washy in their words and not really understanding what they're trying to convey to their students versus a teacher who is very mindful, very deliberate, and very intentional about what they say, you're left with a different impact from each one of those teachers. So when we talk about belly dancing with confidence, what we really want to start to establish is when the self-doubt comes in, how do we start to address it so that way we can actually move past it? move forward and get to the point where we want to get to with our dancing. So one of the things that is brought up a lot that I hear, including in myself, I'm not excluded from this, right? Because I'm also human. I'm a dancer and a teacher and a performer, right? So all of us have these multiple aspects of our dance role and how that impacts us. And one of the things that I really see when we start speaking to ourselves, is the mistrust that we have with how we can bring ourselves into the dance, the ability to even dance, and then also the mistrust of not knowing what to do in a moment, right? So I actually went through this with my students uh, last month, the ones who attend with me via live streaming on Tuesday nights. And, um, it was this, it was a five week session that we talked about what we were really wanting to build. So that way in the end, what we built was more trust within ourselves. And one of those aspects was being able to make a choice in that moment and running with it. So when we talk about being in class, when we talk about teaching, when we talk about performing, a lot of the time we spend so much time in indecision and confusion and really not knowing what we wanna do because we want it to be perfect from the get-go. We want it to be absolutely correct without any kind of mistake whatsoever before we move forward. And that, that shit just doesn't work. It just doesn't work that way. It doesn't because we're human and wanting to be perfect every single time, you're gonna be sorely disappointed as all of us have been in the past, right? There's so many times where we wanted to be perfect, make the right choice the first time, and then move forward, getting the ideal results that we want with our dancing, whether it's with practicing, with drilling, with um, a performance, with a gig, with teaching. We wanna get it right the first time, but really what ends up happening is we happen to get it right, and then, yay, see, my mindset worked. Perfect is the way to go. Or we don't get it right. And all you go into is this shit shame spiral all the way down, telling yourself, see, that's why you don't try shit. That's why you don't do things because you are failing. And that failure just validates why you shouldn't try new things, why you shouldn't do new things, take chances blah, 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 fill in the blank, you know where I'm going with this, right? So when we really start to think about how can we trust our choices, part of that is trusting the process. 
trusting that you will make mistakes. It is inevitable that you will F up. I really want to say the other word. It, it is inevitable that you will mess up. And how do we learn from it versus avoiding what is certain to happen, right? So getting ourselves really comfortable with this idea of we got to do things, we got to dance, we got to practice, we got to fail, and then we got to do gigs that sucked, right? You got to do <laughs> you got to do classes that sucked, right? You don't got to do it. It just will happen. You're going to teach classes that you're like, "Damn, that wasn't my finest," right? You're going to perform and you're gonna be like, mm, "Wasn't the best job I've done." And when that happens, you learn from it. You take that experience and you're like, "What the F happened? What shit went down <laughs> that made it appear that way? And it's so important to be able to go back and reflect upon that because if you don't, you'll just keep making the same mistake. And it's one thing to make a mistake the first time because you just didn't know. It's another thing to be avoiding it and to choose blindly continuing that action. So choosing to be blind to continuing that action. Sometimes I wonder if English is my first language, sorry. So when you're going through your process and you're like, oh, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. And you're looking at your goals and you're seeing all the actions that take there at each part. Just know that you're going to have a setback. Nothing is ever clean, right? It goes up and then down and then up and then down and then up and then sometimes way down. And a lot of you know what I'm talking about when we get in those funks where we just don't want to dance, don't want to see people, don't want to do anything. And then all of a sudden you get out of that funk because you get inspired by something or you realize it's really not what you want. And then you come back up again. It's never a straight shot up. And so when we relate all of this back to belly dance and dancing with confidence and teaching with confidence and performing with confidence, we got to allow that shit to come up. You got to allow that to happen because when those things happen, you know how to work through it. If you had the biggest gig of your career and you didn't practice at all in the beginning, failing and falling on your face, having costumes fall apart and something happens at that most bi the biggest event of your career, how do you know how to handle those things? So you can turn it around and make the situation still work. You're not going to feel confident because you don't feel comfortable and you're panicking all over the place, right? It is a cluster F-U-C-K when shit hits the fan and you just don't know what to do. So not only is expecting it super helpful because you can learn from it, you are practicing how to mess up when you dance. You're practicing how to like mess up and clean it up when you teach. You're practicing how to mess up gigging and then clean it up. I can't tell you how many times a class didn't go well, especially in the beginning, right? And if I had stopped then, I would have never had the confidence that I have today and I probably still wouldn't be teaching, okay? So then I had to look back and be like, oh, what can I learn from this? People don't want this thing. I don't want this thing, right? This isn't serving anybody. And so you start to learn. And so I learn from my mistakes and I'm not perfect at it. Hell no, I still F up all the time, but my F ups tend to be a little bit different or my stuff comes out in different ways that I might not have necessarily dealt with before, right? And then you get used to dealing with the imperfection. You get used to dealing with the failing. You get used to dealing with not having it go the way you want it to go. So when we're dancing, if you are belly dancing at home as a hobbyist, right? And you're just allowing yourself to move and you look in the mirror and you start criticizing yourself about all these things, instead of like, ah, talk, taking yourself down a shit shame spiral, right? What you can say is, oh, wow, there's things I can appreciate about my movement right now, right? And say, oh, I like this. I like this and I have a body, right? You can start with, I have a body and I love the way my body is starting to move. And if you are feeling crappy in that moment, dude, seriously, just let yourself feel it. Let yourself feel like crap for a moment. There is no such thing as us all being happy all, this, all the time. That's not realistic and it's not human, right? So if someone has told you 
that you need to be happy all the time and to suppress that feeling and not feel your feelings, that's not, to me, that's not advice that is helpful. It's just not because you're telling yourself to squash yourself down, which puts you more in shame, right? And then you go back down that shit shame spiral. So if I'm feeling crappy because I don't like the way I look when I'm dancing, especially as a hobbyist and when we're all so vulnerable and fragile in our dance experience, right? One of the things is like, why am I feeling bad? Why do I feel bad? What am I expecting of myself when I just started dancing? Like getting to the realism of it, right? What am I expecting of myself? After you feel that feeling, right? And then you're like, huh, gosh, I feel so poopy right now. Well, why do I feel poopy? Uh, yeah, I just don't think I'm good enough or it's taking too long or I should have gotten this by now. Oh, okay. So I'm expecting myself to fill in the blank. I'm not expecting myself to blank. I didn't expect to blank, right? Maybe you wanted perfection. Maybe you didn't want to feel failure. Maybe you're afraid that you're so like capable that you actually might succeed, right? And do really well. Cause some of us are fearful of success as well. It's not just these negative emotions too, right? So when you're really wanting to build that confidence, it really does start with trusting yourself, the choices that you make, trusting that the feelings come up are there for a reason and there to just be like, bing, 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 notification, pay attention, right? So whether you're a dancer, a performer, or a teacher, allow yourself to not get it right Allow yourself to learn when you don't get it right. Allow yourself to learn when you do get it right, right? And then trusting that it's part of the process. And you're not looking for is every single thing a win. No, you're looking for an overall arch and progress in one direction. And remember, it looks like, <laughs> it looks like this sometimes before you get in the direction that you want. So be confident that you are capable of being able to do these things and trust that the process is there to serve you. Get in the action, start doing it, start playing full out so you can really see what you're made of.